Thank you, Sally. Um, it's definitely great to be in Reed today and uh, on behalf of the locals in the broader region, thank you for your ongoing leadership. Uh, Western Sydney is certainly well served to have political representatives like yourself and, and Andrew and, and Michelle uh, representing their communities, so thank you. Um, in in introducing our, our special guest today, the Prime Minister, um, I think it is worth recognising, as, as Sally pointed out, uh, the role he's played beyond his current term in helping our region get to where it is today. Um, and like many of us today, he, he, he shares a passion for Western Sydney, um, its diversity, its strengths and, importantly, its future. Um, as many of you would know, the Prime Minister, before rising to the ranks of the, the highest public office, some time ago now, was also the Federal Infrastructure Minister, uh, where he was responsible for planning and setting the course for, for many of the major projects we're now starting to see emerge whether it's the, the signature Western Sydney International Airport, which is due to open its doors to the world in, at the end of 2026, the National Intermodal at Moorbank, all the supporting, supporting roads and, and rail projects that have been developed in partnership with the New South Wales government. Um, the Prime Minister has played a significant role um, in helping inspire a vision and, importantly, has showed that he's willing to follow through on his commitment to help grow the region. It's a trajectory with infrastructure and city building at the heart uh, that has firmly established our region as one of the most important and the most dynamic in the nation. In last week's budget, with ongoing commitments to fund future road projects, rapid bus connections and other vital infrastructure projects, including housing, will not only provide relief for residents, students and opportunities for industry, but will also ensure the region's growth curve continues in the right direction. Beyond the big ticket projects, what we're seeing in the budget and what we know of the Prime Minister is that there's also a strong emphasis on making sure that all parts of the community, no matter what your background, situation, have access to opportunity. Which is significant in Western Sydney, a place that is home to too many pockets of youth unemployment and social disadvantage. Part of the solution includes enhanced access to employment centres and services, it also includes getting more of our kids to TAFE and to university. And it's why we're keen to see the federal government continue its efforts to ensure more students from lower income families and disadvantaged backgrounds can further their education. Western Sydney is lucky to have some of the best universities in the world operating right here in our backyard. Most of them, if not all of them, are here today with us. And we want to continue, be sure to continue to make the most of the opportunities that their presence provides. When it comes to creating opportunities, perhaps the most pleasing announcement to come out of the federal budget was the Future Made in Australia plan. It's important for a number of reasons. And while its value is going to be felt across the nation, I'm sure, it does carry a special meaning in Western Sydney, which has its roots firmly tied to manufacturing, an industry that historically has been one of our major employers. Our region has and continues to be a region of makers, makers, builders, innovators. It's part of our DNA. And the Future Made in Australia plan, with its focus on supporting local know-how and smart thinking, means Western Sydney, with the support of industry and an engaged higher education sector, is well positioned to lead the nation's next gen economy. In a way, Western Sydney is positioned to go back to the future. It's a role that we have successfully played in the past. In the 1950s, many manufacturers shifted to Western Sydney from the traditional industrial base in the east with promise of cheaper land and a population on the rise. By 1971, more than a third of the workforce in places like Bankstown, Parramatta, Fairfield and Blacktown were working in manufacturing, and at Fairfield it was almost 40%. Western Sydney accounted for nearly 10% of the nation's manufacturing workforce in the 1970s, a remarkable figure for a plucky region in just one part of Sydney. Even with major shifts in technology, automation and large-scale factory closes, which resulted in tens of thousands of job losses in the 80s and 90s, Western Sydney and its traditional manufacturing base continued to show its resolve. While the lights on some of the nation's key industrial areas were switched off, many of Western Sydney's remained bright. Tucked away behind some of the city's major highways in places like Chalora, Yaguna, Smithfield, St Mary's, Silverwater, 
you'll still find a long list of unpretentious but highly productive global success stories. When the clouds got dark, when things got tough, the region and its workers continued to find a way. They continued to make, they continued to build, they continued to innovate. Today, there are still over 80,000 people working in the manufacturing sector in this region, and it is one of the top five industries of employment, generating billions of dollars of economic activity. Much like the region, it's dynamic, diverse, and has shown that it can change. It has embraced new technologies, new methods, and new markets. It has strengths in areas like food and beverage, pharmaceuticals, and with the emergence of the Western Sydney Airport and the Bradfield City Centre and the growth of health and innovation precincts like at Westmead, new competitive advantage have surfaced in the form of aerospace, defence, agribusiness and medical research. And we're seeing that play out across the board in places like Liverpool and in Campbelltown. Many manufacturers in the region have accepted the need to transition to a cleaner, smarter, more efficient way of operating. Unlike the national trend, every single LGA is set to see an increase in manufacturing or advanced manufacturing, advanced manufacturing workers over the next two decades, with more than 4,000 each in Parramatta and Cumberland. They will be working and responding to opportunities like linked to Bradfield, which is currently developing its own advanced manufacturing research facility, which has established, been established to work with industry to drive productivity improvements, leverage new tech new technologies and convert research into commercial products. This is a site that has been deliberately and specifically established to drive the future of manufacturing in Western Sydney and is ideally aligned to the future Made in Australia plan. And there are others too. Just last week, the City of Parramatta released its impressive Draft 2050 vision in addition to the Westmead Health and Innovation District, which is already one of Australia's largest health research zones. The plan identified Silverwater just across the road, a site designed to house the 22nd century industrial jobs of the future with clean and green tech opportunities, a big focus. Over at Horsley Park, the Western Sydney Green Gas Project, a partnership between CSIRO and Gemini, and the Australian Hydrogen Council, it's three years into the largest renewable gas trial in the country, one that can pave the way for more clean energy. Western Sydney has built a brand on being the workers, the heavy lifters, the ones behind the scenes making things tick, the strong, silent type. It's also a fair way to describe the manufacturers. There are global success stories operating in our own backyard and many of us don't know they exist. Take Custom Denning, set up in Guildford in the 1930s, now operating in St Mary's. It's Australia's oldest bus manufacturer and leading the nation with its zero emission buses or M-Square Energy, Australia's largest solar panel manufacturer, whose origins were born in Girrawin in Blacktown, or Beacon Johnson, a trailblazing Australian food business with multi-million dollar facilities in Arndell Park and Greenacre, Greenacre, exporting value-added meat products to the world. I could go on. In addition to the billions of dollars that the future, Australia, future Made in Australia plan could potentially pour into these and other businesses in Western Sydney, it also provides an opportunity to encourage and support the next generation of engineers, creative thinkers and entrepreneurs with a platform to generate local jobs and investment, while also helping the nation secure a stronger global economic footing. I've no doubt that Western Sydney with a young, smart and diverse work workforce that is resilient and re resourceful is ready for the big national challenges that lie ahead of us over the coming decades. Not only does our region have the pedigree, but it has the skills, the tools, and the know-how. It is perfectly positioned to help the, lead the nation's economic transition. Australia's future made right here in Western Sydney. It has a nice ring to it. To tell us more about it, please welcome someone who may be more of an inner Westie than a traditional Westie, but he's definitely a Westie at heart. Please welcome Prime Minister of Australia, Anthony Albanese.